Chapter 2. The Richest Man in Babylon In old Babylon, there once lived a certain very rich man named Arkad. Far and wide, he was famed for his great wealth. Also was he famed for his liberality. He was generous in his charities. He was generous with his family. He was liberal in his own expenses. But nevertheless, each year his wealth increased more rapidly than he spent it. And there were certain friends of younger days who came to him and said, You, Arkad, are more fortunate than we. You have become the richest man in all Babylon while we struggle for existence. You can wear the finest garments and you can enjoy the rarest foods while we must be content if we can clothe our families in raiment that is presentable and feed them as best we can. Yet once we were equal. We studied under the same master. We played in the same games. Mm -hmm. And in neither the studies nor the games did you outshine us. And in the years since... You have been no more an honorable citizen than we. Nor have you worked harder or more faithfully insofar as we can judge. Why then should a fickle fate single you out to enjoy all the good things of life and ignore us who are equally deserving? Thereupon Arkad remonstrated with them, saying, If you have not acquired more than a bare existence in the years since we were youths, it is because you either have failed to learn the laws that govern the building of wealth, or else you do not observe them. Fickle fate is a vicious goddess who brings no permanent good to anyone. On the contrary, she brings ruin to almost every man upon whom she showers unearned gold, She makes wanton spenders who soon dissipate all they receive and are left beset by overwhelming appetites and desires they have not the ability to gratify. Yet others whom she favors become misers and hoard their wealth, fearing to spend what they have, knowing they do not possess the ability to replace it. They further are beset by fear of robbers and doom themselves to lives of emptiness and secret misery. Others there probably are who can take unearned gold and add to it and continue to be happy and contented citizens. But so few are they, I know of them, but by hearsay. Think you of the men who have inherited sudden wealth and see if these things are not so. His friends admitted that of the men they knew who had inherited wealth, these words were true, and they besought him to explain to them how he had become possessed of so much prosperity. So he continued. In my youth, I looked about me and saw all the good things there were to bring happiness and contentment, and I realized that wealth increased the potency of all these. Wealth is a power. With wealth, many things are possible. One may ornament the home with the richest of furnishings. One may sail the distant seas. One may feast on the delicacies of far lands. One may buy the ornaments of the gold worker and the stone polisher. One may even build mighty temples for the gods. One may do all these things and many others in which there is delight for the senses and gratification for the soul. And when I realized all this, I decided to myself that I would claim my share of the good things of life. I would not be one of those who stand afar off, enviously watching others enjoy. I would not be content to clothe myself in the cheapest raiment that looked respectable. I would not be satisfied with the lot of a poor man. On the contrary, I would make myself a guest at this banquet of good things. 
being, as you know, the son of a humble merchant, one of a large family with no hope of an inheritance and not being endowed, as you have so frankly said, with superior powers or wisdom, I decided that if I was to achieve what I desired, time and study would be required. As for time, all men have it in abundance. You, each of you, have let slip by sufficient time to have made yourselves wealthy. Yet you admit you have nothing to show except your good families, of which you can be justly proud. As for study, did not our wise teacher teach us that learning was of two kinds? The one kind being the things we learned and knew, and the other being the training that taught us how to find out what we did not know. Therefore did I decide to find out how one might accumulate wealth, and when I had found out, to make this my task and do it well. For is it not wise that we should enjoy while we dwell in the brightness of the sunshine? For sorrows enough shall descend upon us when we depart for the darkness of the world of spirit. I found employment as a scribe in the Hall of Records, and long hours each day I labored upon the clay tablets. Week after week and month after month I labored, yet for my earnings I had naught to show. Food and clothing and penance to the gods and other things of which I could remember not what absorbed all my earnings, but my determination did not leave me. And one day... Algamish, the moneylender, came to the house of the city master and ordered a copy of the ninth law, and he said to me, I must have this in two days, and if the task is done by that time, two coppers will I give to thee. So I labored hard, but the law was long, and when Algamish returned, the task was unfinished. He was angry, and had I been his slave, he would have beaten me. But knowing the city master would not permit him to injure me, I was unafraid. So I said to him, Algamish, you are a very rich man. Tell me how I may also become rich. And all night I will carve upon the clay. And when the sun rises, it shall be completed. He smiled at me and replied, You are a forward knave, but we will call it a bargain. All that night I carved, though my back pained and the smell of the wick made my head ache until my eyes could hardly see. But when he returned at sunup, the tablets were complete. Now, I said, tell me what you promised. You have fulfilled your part of our bargain, my son, he said to me kindly, and I am ready to fulfill mine. I will tell you these things you wish to know, because I am becoming an old man, and an old tongue loves to wag. And when youth comes to age for advice, he receives the wisdom of years. But too often does youth think that age knows only the wisdom of days that are gone, and therefore profits not. But remember this. The sun that shines today is the sun that shone when thy father was born, and will still be shining when thy last grandchild shall pass into the darkness. The thoughts of youth, he continued, are bright lights that shine forth like the meteors that oft make brilliant the sky. But the wisdom of age is like the fixed stars that shine so unchanged that the sailor may depend upon them to steer his course. Mark you well, my words. For if you do not, you will fail to grasp the truth that I will tell you, and you will think that your night's work has been in vain. Then he looked at me shrewdly from under his shaggy brows and said in a low, forceful tone, I found the road to wealth when I decided that a part of all I earned was mine to keep. And so will you. Then he continued to look at me with a glance that I could feel pierce me. A 
said no more. Is that all? I asked. That was sufficient to change the heart of a sheep herder into the heart of a money lender, he replied. But all I earn is mine to keep, is it not? I demanded. Far from it, he replied. Do you not pay the garment maker? Do you not pay the sandal maker? Do you not pay for the things you eat? Can you live in Babylon without spending? What have you to show for your earnings of the past month? What for the past year? Fool. You pay to everyone but yourself. Dollard. You labor for others. As well be a slave and work for what your master gives you to eat and wear. If you did keep for yourself one-tenth of all you earn, how much would you have in ten years? My knowledge of the numbers did not forsake me, and I answered, as much as I earn in one year. You speak but half the truth, he retorted. Every gold piece you save is a slave to work for you. Every copper it earns is its child that also can earn for you. If you would become wealthy, then what you save must earn, and its children must earn, that all may help to give to you the abundance you crave. You think I cheat you for your long night's work, he continued. But I am paying you a thousand times over if you have the intelligence to grasp the truth I offer you. A part of all you earn is yours to keep. It should not be less than a tenth, no matter how little you earn. It can be as much more as you can afford. Pay yourself first. Do not buy from the clothes maker and the sandal maker more than you can pay out of the rest and still have enough for food and charity and penance to the gods. Wealth like a tree grows from a tiny seed. The first copper you save is the seed from which your tree of wealth shall grow. The sooner you plant that seed, the sooner shall the tree grow. And the more faithfully you nourish and water that tree with consistent savings, the sooner may you bask in contentment beneath its shade. So saying, he took his tablets and went away. I thought much about what he had said to me, and it seemed reasonable, so I decided that I would try it. Each time I was paid, I took one from each ten pieces of copper and hid it away. And strange as it may seem, I was no shorter of funds than before. I noticed little difference as I managed to get along without it. But often I was tempted, as my hoard began to grow, to spend it for some of the good things the merchants displayed, brought by camels and ships from the land of the Phoenicians. But I wisely refrained. A twelfth month after Algamish had gone, he again returned and said to me, Son, have you paid to yourself not less than one-tenth of all you have earned for the past year? I answered proudly. Yes, Master, I have. But all right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me get into my other account here so we can go ahead and start our workshop for today. Uh, this is exciting. I'm looking forward to doing this with you guys for the folks that's getting on right now. And so let me get on in here and get you guys going. Hello, everybody. How you doing? We are going to go into, let me get in the stream yard real quick. I'm going to change my profile from the other one to this, to this machine over here. Uh, let's just get going and let's see what we can do. All right. So <clears throat> here we go. Appreciate all of you guys getting in. And so we are all making all making new new things happening. So let's get to it. Let me enter the studio. Here we go. Let me change that. All 
Okay, so hopefully you guys are hearing me. Uh, everything should be good. Appreciate you guys coming in. Today, <clears throat> today's workshop, let me go ahead and um, get this going. Let's go ahead and uh, get us moving in the right direction. So first of all, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to this great event we're going to do today. I'm going to start off with our song and then we're going to go from there. All right, let's play our song. Let's get moving. I gave us a little bit more time for folks to get in. So let's get do it. Let's make it happen. All right. So here we go. You guys, you're going to get started in about two minutes. Cryptocurrency, 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 changing how the world does business. Ask MLS system how to get in on this. Send money around the world, almost free. We don't need a bank for a mission, you see. Tell your friends about MLS system Here to raise our financial wisdom Spreading like a wildfire all over the world Don't get left out, learn what it's all about From just pennies to thousands of dollars Bitcoin grew a worldwide currency Only a few knew well MLS system is making it happen Open your account and get tapping Digital currency is an emerging technology A way to up your financial psychology it's money you can spend. Let it grow exponentially before you dip in. It's called cryptocurrency. 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 Changing how the world does business. Just make sure you get in on this. Send money around the world almost free. We don't need a bank for a mission, you see. Tell your friends about MLS system. Here to raise our financial wisdom. Countries around the world are jumping in. Creating ways to ride the train. Business is lining up to accept Bitcoin. Soon every store will jump. System to get your coins, get in the mix, learn the tricks. Bitcoins are facing the dark. Twenty to one. Call in LS system to have some fun. Cryptocurrency, changing how the world does business. It's so all right, guys. Welcome, 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 everybody. How you doing today? Today is going to be an awesome day because you're going to learn today about business, how to build business, and how to build business credit. And we're going to start off with um, I'm going to log into one of my sites that I go to to keep track of my business as I'm building it, so you get a good idea of what to do, how to do it. I'm going to walk through everything with you. All right, on um, setting the profile, actually using certain things that I use, the tools uh, to get your business moving in the right direction. So we're going to do that right now. And then we're going to move on and we're going to jump into um, DMB. We're going to go into actual uh, looking at your credit reports, what it looks like when you get started. Uh, we're going to look at all those different, all those different tools. So you got a good idea Oh, what's happened? Let me, for some reason, my password is not working here. Hold on for one second. All right, there we go. Okay, so we got in. All right, we good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to share my screen with you. And let me bring up one tool here. I got that one tool. Let me bring it up. This is what I use to build my business credit. And I highly recommend you use this tool. All right, so I'm going to share my screen with you. Let me share my screen right now, and then we'll go, we'll go from there. Okay, hold on for one second. I'm just moving everything over. All right, and we're going to start right here. So let's go with this. Let me share my screen, and then here we go. Share the screen, and we're going to share. We're going to share this screen. Here we go. All right. So you guys should see my screen right now. You got a full view of my screen. 
Um, that's my screen that I used. Uh, I got two screens up. These are, this is a 22 inch monitor. And so what are you looking at? You're looking at what we call our business, how to set up a business profile. Now, the first thing you got to understand for all the folks that's here, the very first thing you got to understand is when it comes to business, you must have a business profile if you want to build business on it. If you don't care about building business on it and you just want to get um, credit cards and, you know, not the best rates. I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that in a second. Not getting the best rates. Um, you can do business credit without building a business profile. And what I mean by that is that the banks will give you a business loan or business credit card. Um, you can get uh, different companies that will, will, you know, you apply for credit and they'll give it to you. But you're, but they, you, you got to build a, a credit report that's going to come, that's going to report to the, the credit bureau agencies. One of those agencies, right, is called DMB. It's called a Paydex score. And another one is called your business experience, okay? Business experience, all right? And so you need to set up a profile that's going to allow you to do that, right? To get that up, to, to, get that, to get that up so you can actually go in and get your profile set up, get some business going so you can literally, literally make things happen when it comes to your report. And to get, to get thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars, even a million dollars in business credit, you have to have a business profile that's going to be fundable. So let's explain what we mean. All right. So this this software that I'm using, um, this is one of the tools that I use. And you can, you can get this tool from me as well. But this tool, it allows you to build up your profile in a way that you understand what the requirements are for the underwriters, it's going to allow you to, to find the companies that do report because a lot of companies do not report. About 90% of the companies don't report to the different credit reporting agencies when it comes to business credit. Now, let me explain about that. In business credit, there is basically three different agencies that you have out there, three different agencies. One is called Business Experian. The other one that's very famous is called a Paydex score. You probably people heard about that all the time. The Paydex score, well, that's come that comes from Dun and Bradstreet, and then you have Equifax. All right, so the business Equifax. Now you cannot sign up for the business Equifax, but you can sign up for the Dun and Bradstreet number with the Paydex score, and you can sign up for the business Experian where you get a BIN number. OK, B-I-N, you get a Paydex score and a B-I-N score, a B-I-N number, a Paydex number, a DMB number, rather, and then a Paydex, uh, I'm sorry, a DMB number and a B-I-N number. The, the DMB number is strictly for Paydex. That's for your Paydex scores, OK? And we're going to learn about that. But before we get there, you got to set up your profile for your business. Now, some of the things you need in your business. I must have, I'm just going to start here, what we call the, the, the fundable foundation, right? So the first thing we're going to need is I got to get a business name, okay? I got to have a business name. I got to have a business address. I got to have a business entity. So that's common, right? Everybody know if I'm going to start a business, I got to have a business name. I'm going to go to Secretary of State. I'm going to put that business name in, and then I'm going to need a business address. A lot of people use their home address as a business address. Well, when it comes to doing, you know, getting the big money, they prefer you have what they call a business, a real business address or a virtual business address, not necessarily your home address. All right. And you can get business addresses. They got multiple places you can get them. Um, uh, that's out there. They call Regis. Right. You got a few folks that says Regis. Some folks use different ones. You don't want to use a P.O. box. Right. You don't want to use those type of boxes. Um, you want to get something like this, a DaVinci virtual office, uh, Alliance virtual office, uh, must be, you know, Regis is one. Now I use, I post the one, some folks says they don't use it, but they do have a re a regular business address. I'm going to, I'm going to share an example with you, what I'm talking about. So I'm actually going to go to, I post the one. Okay. 
Now I'm going to get me, I'm going to look at what the different prices are. Now, most prices are going to be going to be between $39 to $69 a month to get a virtual business address. But you can get one that's pretty cheap. I'm looking for an office building, right? I'm going to say plans here. I want a virtual business address. I'm not going to get a mailbox. It's a lot different. To get a virtual mailbox is different. I'm actually going to get a business address. And I'm also looking to do an annual, right? I want to do an annual one, okay? And I'm going to go down. I'm just going to, I'm just going to say I'm going to sign one, right? Or location. Let's say location. All right. So what I'm looking for, I'm in Atlanta, right? I'm in Georgia, rather. And then I'm going to go look in Atlanta because you got all these different cities you can go to. I'm going to go to Atlanta and I'm looking for an office building. That's what I'm looking for. Only office buildings. All right. And I'm going to be able to get my mail. Also, um, it could be a mailing address, but I'm also I want a real business address. Well, here's the one in Atlanta. I just want to bring it up for you. Now, look at this building. That's right downtown Peachtree, right? Right off Peachtree. This is a real office building. This is the one that I use, as a matter of fact, for two of my businesses. This is it right here, right? And it gives you a suite number. It gives you your, your uh, mailbox number. You got it right here. It's the address, right? And that's what it is. So this, is, this office building is your actual virtual address. This is it. You can go in there and you can... Uh, if you need an office space, you can go use the office space. You can go in there and set up appointments. You can you can actually use the building, okay? So that's one place that I use right here is this one, all right? Now, that address has only cost me $19.99 a month, but if I want to use other services, I got to pay for it, but I don't have no reason to go downtown. A lot of these buildings downtown, believe it or not, when COVID hit, they they start like half the company, half the people show up in the office building. Because now they got used to working from home and they saying, well, listen, if you, you, was, you was actually more proficient working at home, right? You don't have the, I guess, the same social environment going on because you're at your house instead of the office. But some folks, you know, you like to go to the office and some folks like to stay home. And so there's a lot of companies that their building is halfway empty, which is a good idea that when people want to do business and they want to get a business address, well, the prices are trying to come down now. Why? Because they want to get people to come use, you know, take the business owners to come use these buildings because these buildings cost a lot of money. And so if they can get people to pay and never even come into the office, but still getting rent for it, that's a great idea. And that's what's going on with that one. That's the one I use in Atlanta. OK, now. So that's understanding that. Let's go to the next thing. So I got my business name. Right. And let's let's talk about a business name, for example. Most people like I don't know what to call it. They they get confused about what to call their business. So I'm gonna give you some ideas today about the ways you can call your business, right? So for example, you could take your initials and call it network, or call it your initials and call it um uh you know a number behind it and give it ink, okay. You can take your initials and call it enterprises. Take your initial and call it enterprise. Take your initials and call it management, right? Um, there's a there's so many different ways people set up their uh for example, their their name, initials investments, right? Uh you can say, you know, initials group. Is is you don't, it's no big deal on the name unless you're gonna be specific in your in your company so for example if i'm in trucking and i want to call it abc trucking right so yeah that's going to be very specific but i i truly want a generic address a generic name not address but generic name and the reason is so i can be diversified in my business right so for example one of my companies is called uh my initials wbi management but that means I can manage people, resources, right? I can manage people, resources, and money. It doesn't put me in a box. It doesn't pigeonhole me. If I say to somebody, okay, this is ABC lawn service, I'm strictly committed to doing lawn service, right? But if I'm if I'm a management company, I'm an enterprise company, I'm a group, 
I am, uh, you know, investments, then I'm open to doing all kinds of different things with my company. I'm not restricted in one field. That's the point that I'm making, right? So that's a beautiful thing you can do. So when it comes to a name, you don't have to be, you know, all elaborate. You don't have to have a very long name for business, which is definitely not recommended to have a very long name. Okay. Um, you know, five, six different names across the company name, you know, try to keep your name short, short is short is good, short is sweet. Also, when it comes to the logo of your company, um, you know, the way logos are today, there's, you know, you can go to Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com and you can actually get your logo set up pretty, pretty cheap. Get your logo set up pretty cheap. Um, they got circular logos. They got square logos. They got 3D logos. Um, just make sure when you get your logo set up that it can show up on any background that you do. A dark color background, a white background. So you may have to have your logo. When they do your logo, you want to be able to do it in black and white. You want to be able to do it in color, right? So that it can go on any background. Right. That's what you want. So whether it's going to be circular, whether it's going to be square, whether it's going to be 3D, whatever you're going to do, you need to have multiple colors so that you can put it on a black and white background as well. Or if you put it on a white background, the colors will show up. If you got white in your logo and you put it on a white background, they're going to be they're not going to be able to see it. So you need to have some kind of contrast that you're going to be able to put on your logo. So they'll they'll design that for you when you when you tell them hey i need this logo to be able to go on a white background a color a color background right dark color background so you so that way they can give you multiple palettes of that logo all right understand that now when it comes to the business address we just went over that part now the business entity what they're really talking about when they talk about business entity what are you are you a llc right are you a c corporation are you going to be an S corporation? Now, now, what's the difference between uh, basically uh, LLC? An LLC can be a single, single member LLC, which is going to be cheaper when you file your taxes because they tax it as a sole proprietor. You got it? The worst kind of business to have is a sole proprietor. What is that? That's an individual that's tied into your social security number, sole proprietor. The bad thing about that is you got all the liability on you, all of it. So when something happens, they somebody suing your business, they actually suing you because you are the business. When you have an LLC or above, LLC, C Corporation, S Corporation, when you have an LLC, you have limited, that's why it's called limited liability company, right? So you're going to be limited in the amount of that you're responsible for, right? They can't go after your personal assets. If you have an LLC, okay, um, you want to make sure they don't pierce the veil on your company. We talk about that in another time, but that's the, what they're talking about is that, you know, when you mix in your commingling your funds, commingling your personal funds with your business funds, right? And so more details are coming at later. But when we talk about the S corporation, that is an LLC, and then you check the box for an s corporation all right that's how the s corporation comes about so you set up an llc and then you said okay i want to convert the llc to an s corporation so that you can uh do your taxes from the irs code a little bit different right s corporation um with an s corporation you cannot have any foreign uh department heads was say part of the business right you can have not, no foreign shareholders. A C corporation, you can have all kinds of shareholders, right? No matter where they're from. And you can create your companies where you, you can issue stock if you want to, right? You can set it up. Even your LLC can issue stock, okay? Uh, when it comes to filing your annual reports, an LLC does not file annual reports, but a C corporation does. You got to file an annual report, okay? And so it, it all depends on how you want to structure your company and how much involvement you want to do 
um, when it comes to your company. LLC is the easiest thing to do. Now, there are two types of LLC, well, really three types of LLCs. One is called an LLC single, single, single member. And then you have, if you got more than one member of the LLC, then that's called a partnership, right? That means you're going to file as a partnership. The tax is going to be a little bit different, but the, but the way the money is split, it's split between all the partners inside that company from the, from the, uh, the cash flow that you make, right? In other words, minus all your expenses, right? Because when a company, when you file a company, you know, what's, what's happening first is you're getting rid of all the expenses up front. In other words, you don't pay taxes on the whole thing like you do as a as a regular employee. Uncle Sam gets their money first, right? When it comes to business, Uncle Sam gets their money last. That's the beautiful thing about having a business. Right. Everything is done last. That's why you want to get that done that way. OK, now what else? When it comes to your other LLCs, they got a thing called an LLP, a limited liability partnership. That's two LLCs that join together for a mission. Right. To do something together. But they maintaining a companies and they join these two companies together as a partnership until that that partnership is no longer needed right it's called an llp limited liability partnership all right that protects both owners and they work together they they have some expenses they've taken off and then we don't no longer need that partnership to work together again then it goes go back to the regular llc's right they never lose their the original llc they just join with another LLC to create this partnership. That's how that works. All right, so understand that about the different types of business entities. Now, the next thing is to get your EIN. When it's time to get your EIN, most likely you wanna get it done online and you get it done for free. And the website to go to is irs.gov slash EIN. It takes you right there, begin your application, and then once you be, once you uh, do your application, you go through the process and you can go, I'm going to bring it up right now for you so you can see it. So what happens is, as I go to the IRS, irs.gov slash EIN. Now, the cool thing about this is there are multiple ways of setting up your, your EINs for your different projects, right? So let me give, so let me give an example of what I'm talking about. So let me go to E. I, I put an extra thing in there. Let me back that back out. All right. Okay. So it brings you right to this right to this site. And you scroll down. And right here it says online application. You just click on it. And then, you know what? And they've been doing this. They've been closing the IRS.gov on, on the weekends. Why do they do that? I don't know. But they close it. It's like it's not online. They take it offline on Saturday and Sunday. And then on Monday, they open it right back up again, right? But they give you the first part, but you can't put your application in on the weekend. And it's it's all electronic. And I don't understand why they do it, but that's what they do. Um, but anyway, that's where you'll go to get that done, okay? You go to irs.gov to get that to get that done, get your EIN. You can get an EIN on a trust. You can get an EIN on your children. So they can you can be the guardian for a child, right? Let's like say you're going to open up... Um, uh investment account right so i'm going to open up charles schwab or something like that then you're going to get an ein for your for your children uh so you can do that you also can get an ein for your trust now for example i talk about trust i do trust right so for example i have um my solo 401k now what is that Solo 401k is when you are building your own retirement Right. And then you want to have your trust account because that's what it is. And you can set it up so that you have your money going into that account and it's going into the trust account with, for example, with Charles Schwab or TD Ameritrade, stuff like that. Right. You can get that done. OK. But it's called Solo 401k. You can get it for your, your businesses. You can get it for your uh, your guardianships. You can get it for I mean, it's all kind of things, the categories they have 
in that so you can do your, your EIN. All right, next thing, let's talk about phone listing. Now, all this is part of your fund. Of the, you got to have all this done. If you plan on getting big money, you got to get all this done in the process, okay? So the next one I'm going to get is my phone number and then list it on the 411. Now, what I mean by your business phone number. So a business phone number, a couple of things you can do. One is that you can go to your provider, for example, T-Mobile, Verizon, um, AT&T, right? And you can say, hey, listen, I want to turn my cell phone, I want to make this cell phone into a business phone. So they could go ahead and convert it to a business phone, right? Um, and you can keep the same number, make everything happen, and you just change it to a business phone. And now you got it listed as a business phone. So when you call somebody, your name doesn't show up. It's going to be your business name going to show up. Okay. So that's your business phone. Now you also want to get that listed inside of 411. There's another way you can get phone numbers. It's called getting a second line or some other ones they recommend, right? So with some of the resources, Ring Central, Vonage, phone.com. But I use second line. So let's bring it up real quick so you can see what it looks like. I get second lines pretty, pretty cheap. Second line dot, I think, C-O. Second line dot C-O. Yes, get a second line right here. Second, spell it out. Second to ND line dot C-O, not dot com dot C-O. So you get that done, right? So add a second line, phone line to your smartphone. You get that done. Now you got the phone number. You got your second phone number. You got it, right? So you got your second phone number. And pretty much, I think I got it for free. They get they got a free special going on right now. Get a second line for free, right on your cell phone, second phone line. Now, that's your business line. So what do you do next? You're going to go to list yourself. Now you got your second line. List your L-I-S-T, listyourself.net, listyourself.net, all right? And what you're going to do is right here, individual person, an individual personal or business listing. This is which one you want. This is it. You click on more info and all you do is come in here. You change it from residential, change it to business, put in your business name, put the phone number in, your, the phone number they gave you. Or if you converted your uh, other cell phone to a business, then convert it, you know, put, put that number in there, right? Don't use your personal cell phone number as a business number. They're going to give you want to get a second number or you can get one for free. Right. So I just gave you the information on that. So put the number in, put your company in, pick the business category your company is in. And they use the SIC code. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But SIC codes is where you're going to talk about your business category, what it is. Then the, what's the primary reason for your business? I love the question here. It says, I mean, the answer, one of the answers is my business is not real if it's not listed. And that's what I chose, right? If this is not real, it's not listed because it's true. They, they want to be able to see your business in 411 directory, okay? So that's one of the things you can say. It doesn't really, it's, it's just for them. It's not for nothing else. It's just for them, right? Your business street address. Now, if you got an iPostal address, that's the address you want to put in there. Right, you want to put that address in there. That's your business address. Start using that address as your business. Now, your mailing address could be a whole different thing. They go to your PO box, right? You don't you don't want to get no mail to your house. You want to separate your company from where you live. That's the whole purpose of what I'm teaching you, right? Don't put it in your house. Put it into the PO box. Put it into another. Uh, Regis address, business virtual address, put it there, right? And then so this address is the business address, right? The business address, uh, the city, state, zip, your email address. Email address for this should not be your Gmail account, should not be a Gmail account. It should be your business email account. Let me give you an example. Because some of you believe that you got to, uh, a business email account and it's got Gmail on it. No. So let me give you an example. So if if my company name is WBI Management dot right WBI Management LLC, I have a domain name WBI Management dot com, 
It could be dot US, could be dot TV, it could be dot CO, doesn't matter as long as you got the domain name, right? Of your business domain name. And then my email address is I need at least four different emails. Some people got more, but at least four. So what's the four emails that you need for your business? Number one, it wants you to say info at your company name, dot whatever the domain is, right? So for example, mine says info at wbimanagement.com. Not a Gmail account, wbimanagement.com. So that's my actual email address. So that's the first email address. The second email address, support at wbimanagement.com. My third email address, billing at wbimanagement.com, right? And then my fourth email address, that's the minimum four, is my name as the CEO, right? So for example, my first name, Dari at... I don't need my last name on it, right? They, they want to find who I am. They see that in the title. So Dari or Dari P, if I got multiple names in there, right? So Dari at my business name. Now, some companies, for example, I used to work for SunTrust Bank. Everybody got their first name dot last name at SunTrust.com, which is called Truist now, right? So you could do it that way if you want it that way as well, right? Your first name dot your last name at your company name dot whatever it is dot com dot us dot tv whatever wherever the case is right so you want to have those type of email addresses no gmails no that's not professional and you can lose business that way as well right you want to have a professional now to get that gmail i mean to get that business address you need a domain right you got to get a domain and then you got to get that domain hosted so it all depends on where you go to get it hosted, get the domain set up, then get the website set up. Now you can get that done with Fiverr or you can use our services to get it done. Um, and so, you know, just there's different ways of getting it done. Okay. Now, enough about that. Now, what's going to happen is when you put all the information in, what list yourself going to do, they're going to say, you want them to call you, call me with, with, with a spoken code. Right, call me, but I have an auto attendant. So you're gonna sit there and set it up. So for example, it's gonna say call me with a code. And I get the code. When I when they call me, they're gonna give me a code, they're gonna give you a, a, a location where to put it in at. Once you click this button, add the listing, then once they call you back and give you the code, you put the code in, then in 10 days or less, they're gonna send you an email that says you are you have officially been listed in 411. So now your company is listed in 411, right? So you got to do that for every company that you own. You got it? Now, this is all part of building that profile that we're talking about because a profile is very important for you if you're going to start building wealth in that profile, right? So we talked about the websites, the emails. We just talked about that, websites and emails, right? So I got my website set up. I got the email set up. You can get a website set up. Um, depending on where you go get it at, some folks are going to be different than others, right? And most of them are going to be generic, but you want to own your website. I want to be able to go in and make changes to my website. I don't need my website to be set up like Wix dot then my domain name. No, no, guys, no, don't use Wix. Don't do that. You want to you want to be able to your your domain should should just be your domain, right? So, for example. Uh, WBI management, because I'm actually setting mine up. I'm getting my whole website redone. To give you an example, this is my whole website being redone now, right? So I'm changing the colors. I'm getting rid of the crypto on it. I'm just, this is a generic thing right now, right? About us, frequently asked questions, terms and conditions, privacy policy. These are the four things you need in your website. You want to have a logo. You want to have all these different, um, you know, your copyrights. Your name, of course, down in the copyright is going to say copyright so and so. This is going to have my domain name, right? Owned by or registered by WBI Management, right? So it's going to say that on there. I'm, I'm, I'm just getting this one rebuilt, right? This is a theme that I'm getting done right now for generically for all my members. It's going to have a nice, clean website, uh, three different versions of the website. It's going to be all set up. 
We're going to make things happen so my members can have a generic website that's building up their businesses. Okay. So we're going to get things done like that, right? Just to have a business presence on it. We got to have that business presence. Okay. Next thing we need. So once we got that done, so now we're going down the list. Now, if you need a business license, mainly becomes with construction, um, business licenses for construction, insurance, right? You're going to do insurance, things like that. You're going to need a business license, right? So mine's got a license right here, the Georgia Department you know, uh, Commissioner's license right here. Um, but you're going to have different licenses, what you need for the resources, right? Then you get past that, then you need a business bank account. Now, the business bank account, you can have multiple business bank accounts. Now, why do I need a business bank account? For one, you're going to build a business relationship with all these different banks. Now, why, why do I say that? Because I want to get multiple credit cards, lines of credit, loans from different banks. I want to have, I need... I want to have a slew of money. What I, what I want? I need at least 300000 to a half a million dollars available to me when I need it. Now, I, listen to what I just said. I'm not, I'm not talking about personal credit. I'm talking about business credit, right? Because we're building a business credit profile. So in my business credit, I need to have all these things done, okay? A lot of people you talk to, all they got is business name, business address, uh, which is the most likely home address, and then or or a PO box or or a business address like a uh, you know UPS store, a FedEx box, right? One of those, and then that's their business entity, and then an the EIN. Uh, a lot of them don't even have a business phone number. They got they using a regular cell phone as a business, so their profile is jacked up. Uh, they got Gmail accounts. They got. Uh, their website just generic. They don't have any the tools that's needed to verify the website, to verify the business, right? And then they they got somebody been in business. I heard a little while ago they was in business for four years, and using their personal bank account. Guess what? They don't qualify. They're not protected. None of that stuff. Their LLC is just out there on its own and you are liable for everything that goes on because you got commingled funds. You don't have a business bank account. Their money was going into their personal bank account. So there's no profile set up for that business. You got it? So you need a business bank. Now, you can have multiple banks, right? So for example, I got Chase, Bank of America, Fidelity, Wells Fargo, um, you can have, you know, all kind of different banks and each bank will have its own bank account and information like that. So let me give an example. One of my members, you know, told me, he said, hey, man, he said, uh, Wall Street. He said, I use, for example, I got three bank accounts and one of my banks, when I do Zelle, I should use Chase. So Chase at my business name dot com. So you know exactly where the money went to. So if I got Bank of America, I got B, B of A or B O A at wbimanagement.com chase at wbimanagement.com right fidelity at you see what i'm saying wells at so now you know where the money went to on your zelle and that email address is tied to that um bank account now when you do zelle zelle is only good for one phone number so if you got a business phone number and you put it with Chase, you cannot use that same phone number that you're going to do for Zelle and Bank of America because it's only going to go to one location. That's why you use you can you can add up to five different emails per uh, bank, right? For your Zelle payments. So, for example, if I'm doing Chase, then I know I'm going to use Chase at the Chase email for that for that bank. If I'm in Bank of America, then I just use Bank of America email at that one. But my business phone numbers is the same in both banks. But in Zelle settings, it's, it's being set by the email address, not by the phone number. When I'm doing Zelle, we're going to talk about Zelle in a second. So the, the Zelle part of the banking is that you can you can get your money quickly with Zelle without any fees but the bank not gonna let you do that for your entire 
you know, your, your entire banking solutions, right? If you're doing small banking, our goal is to get your bank account up to at least $10,000 a month, even when you first get started. We're teaching you what to do, how to get that going. It's very important. Now, two months, three months from now, five months from now, you, your, your bank account is going to be showing you making 40, 50 K coming in. Um, and we, we got to plan the way we do that. Right. But that's the whole goal is to make sure that your bank account is set up in the right way. Okay. Now we're going to teach you how to do business. We're going to, we're going to make sure you get profits in your business. We're going to show you doing business with other business entities. Right. So your profile is going to be huge when it's time for you to go get them loans, your credit cards, your stuff is going to be out there, right? When it comes to Zelle payments, the bank don't make any money on Zelle. So they're not going to let you throw all your money with Zelle in your bank account. You might be limited to, to $5,000 a day to $20,000 a month, right? You can, that's all you can get. Once you go past $20,000, then you can't do no, do no more Zelle. You have to do merchant. You got to do uh, credit card payments, invoicing. The banks get paid a little bit of money on that, right? So they can make money on, if they don't make no money on Zelle and they allow you to do Zelle, all banks don't do Zelle. They allow you to, do, they allow you to use Zelle and it's free for you and the bank don't make any money on it. But they only gonna allow you to do so much. So when you start doing credit cards, what they're gonna make, and on the online position, they'll make, you know, 3.5% off that transaction. If you're going off your website or you take it on, you know, you take it right over the phone, then it's 2.5%. Um, some of them is going to be, you probably can get it down to 1.5% with a monthly fee, right? It all depends on your, uh, what your bank account is doing, what your code is. Remember that code called the SIC code? or the NAICS code, what those codes are, is the category that you're in. And some of your companies are in what they call a high risk. For example, one of my companies is called MLS Bitcoin Club LLC. I can't hide it. It's crypto. The banks don't like crypto. So I got to go get me a high end merchant account that would allow me to accept credit cards off my training that I offer, right? And so they charge me 3.4% or 3.7%, right? Or 4.5%, depending on what credit card being used, you see? So the point that I'm making is, is that depending on your industry, if you are insurance, right? Life insurance, health insurance, or, you know, property insurance, crypto, um, those are high end, right? Uh, another one is called um, credit repair, credit credit repair. Anything with credit repair in it is going to be high end, a high risk company. And so they charge you more money for transactions, right? That's just what they do, guys. Um, doesn't matter. Like, for example, I don't, I don't do any crypto per se in the club. We teach you about crypto, right? But it doesn't matter. They got crawlers that go out there on your website. It says, hey, they mentioned the word crypto. So therefore, you're getting paid. You're being charged more money. That's just the way the banks is, right? All right, enough about that. But anyway, you understand what I mean. Now, a business bank account, you, you can have multiple, more than one. We recommend you have at least two checking accounts per business in the same bank. Why is that? One is that you got what they call the sweep account. That's what banks do. So all the funds coming into your business, all the funds that go into your business, it should go into that one account. Any incoming money that's coming in should all go to that main bank account. I call that bank account number one. Okay. Then when you got to do some withdrawals or make payments, and what you're going to do is transfer the funds you need into your second checking account and you do your withdrawals only from that bank account. So that way you got more money showing up in that one bank account. And when they go to do your loans, they're gonna do most likely in uh, an internet 
they're going to check your bank accounts through your internet. And so you give them access to the only that one bank account, right? So they see all the payments coming in, right? And that's what they, that's what they're looking for. How much, how much cash flow is coming in, how much cash flow is leaving out and what's the balance. So if you got all this cash flow coming in, and you only got maybe three or four or five payments going out, and it shows you that you still got you know thousands of dollars still left over in your bank account. That's good for you when you start to get loans. Okay, you want to have money in your. You can't have ten thousand coming in and then all ten thousand dollars going out. If you do that, then guess what? You broke. You got a business, but you're not making any money, so you still consider to be broke. Okay, so you're gonna get past that. Now, the next thing we need is to get a, a merchant account. I mentioned that a little bit. A merchant account is when you're able to accept credit cards, right? You're going to be, be able to do invoicing. And when I say invoicing, this is what I'm talking about. So let's say, you know, we got about, let's say we got 10 businesses that we're dealing with, right? 10 businesses. Okay. Out of those 10 businesses, I can do a net, I can say, okay, I'm going to send you a request for payment. You're going to pay it in 10 days. You got 10 days to pay this invoice. You can pay the invoice with a credit card. So I'm allowing you to pay it with a credit card, right? So you send it to you. You got it in your account for 10 days or 30 days or 60 days or, or 90 days, a net 90, right? So you can set things up like that where you can send payments to people and invoice to people or businesses. And so that's called accounts receivables. So what does that mean? That means you can get loans on your invoices, right? So let's say I got $50,000 worth of invoices coming in, right? And so I can get a loan up to $50,000. They'll allow me to get a $50,000 loan over and I can pay it back over time. The whole thing in business is I am trying to improve my cash flow and get it up to a point where I'm bringing, I have available to me $250,000, $500,000, a million dollars. So, because I don't need a job, I need cash flow. When you start a business, you just created a brand new job for you. You now can really say, my job. Like most people walk around, they work for another company, right? They work for McDonald's or a, a corporation downtown, wherever you at, police department, right? Whatever you, wherever you're working at. And you say, hey, you know, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to my job today and see what I can do. But can you give yourself a raise? That's not your job. That's where you go to work. When you start a business, it is your job. Because now you can give yourself a raise. You own it. You can pass it down to your children, pass it down to your grandchildren, right? So you really own a job when you actually start your business. You just got to treat it like a job, not like a hobby. Most people, when they first get started in a business, most people don't make $28,000 a year. All year long, they didn't make $28,000 because they treat their business like a hobby. You'd be surprised how many people use their personal credit cards. Now I used to do the same thing to fund their business activities. And, and because you didn't know how to get business credit. So now with this this whole program we're doing, we're teaching you how to get business credit and build on it. In our club, MLS Bitcoin Club, I'm just going to show you a little bit of that. We have a business section inside this club mls bitcoin club and this is our level three matter of fact when we do our presentations it's our level three let me matter of fact let me bring it up i'm just going to bring up that um screen and you'll see what i'm talking about let me let me log in so you can see what we're talking about here all right so this number is the amount of Bitcoin this account has made. There's a number of people. There's a number of people that said they want to be a part of it, right? Their referrals. And all these people here are not active. And these are the number of positions 
the the houses that we that we own that we went through, right? So let's give you an example on how powerful our club is. This is just an example. And we got people that got, you know, small numbers here. And we got people that got over 25, 30 Bitcoin. This is this represents Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, just I'm just giving you some, some heads up real quick. So I'm gonna go to this chart. Here's Bitcoin. Look at this. This is a just just the breakout that happened yesterday and what's going on right now. This this chart here is a 15 minute chart. So look at the pop that it did just today. This happened yesterday. Right now, Bitcoin is at 23. Wow, look at that. Went up another thousand dollars today. It's twenty three thousand two thirty two hundred thirty dollars. Twenty three thousand two. Let's just say twenty three thousand two hundred. Okay. So how much? How much is fourteen Bitcoin? People want to know that, right? Well, well, you know, what are you talking about Bitcoin? Well, what is what's the price on it? Let's figure it out. So I'm going to go to bits.usd. Let's go there. This is the site we go to, bitsusd.com, right? So I get here. I'm just going to show you this. I'm going to change this number here to that. Let's make this a little bit smaller, okay? Just to give you some heads up how powerful what we're doing. This one account, 14 point, 14.5384, right? It's three hundred and thirty-seven thousand seven hundred and ninety-six dollars. That's the value of it right now. Right now. Now it was sixty. Let's bring in the calculator. The height of it it was sixty-nine thousand three hundred dollars. It was a little bit higher than that, but I'm just gonna leave it at sixty-nine thousand three hundred times fourteen point five three eight. For Bitcoin, that is one million seven thousand five hundred eleven dollars. Guys, I'm trying to tell you something. Our club helps people become millionaires. Period. It's just that are you motivated enough to work the plan? That's what that is. All right. Anyway, let's go over here and let's learn about the different levels. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to training. I'm going to go down here and we got small business. I mean, right here, it says crypto 101, extreme credit, and then small business and then extreme business credit. This is what we're talking about, how to get the business credit going. So we teach you all about business credit, how to get this pop moving, you know, get all this moving, learn about how to get your EIN, cash financing, um, how to get your scores going up, right? What the, what, what the, Merchant accounts you're going to use, all that stuff is part of this. All of that is already in there, right? And so what we teach you to do is how to build this profile up inside our club, already there, right? And then the cool thing is when I build this merchant account, I'm going to get the U lines. I'm going to get everything I need to do. So let's talk about merchant accounts. Let's go to first our first tier. Let's go here. Now, what do we need to get our business credit? And I'm going to show you the difference. Of, of the scores that I'm talking about when I do business credit. So let me show you these two different accounts, okay? Now, I've been having one company for a, since 2013. So let me go to this other company first. So I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna go get, I'm gonna go to Dunn's, okay? DNB.com. All right? Now, the reason why I'm doing this, because I wanna show you the power and understand, I got the wrong wrong site. DNB, not DUB. DNB, DNB.com. All right. So here we go. So when I go, when I go to Dun and Bradstreet, remember that is the oldest business provider of scores, basically, that's happening in the world, right? So I'm gonna log in. Why do I need a Dun's number? Here's the reason why. Because the the they need to know where to send your scores to. They need to know where to send them to, right? I need to send my score somewhere. If I get business credit, they need to know where to put it. I need to have my own DUNS number. Because when they go through the application, they're going to ask me for my EIN. They're going to ask me, do you have a DMB number? Do you What is your DMB number? So you're going to set one up. It takes about five to 10 days 
before you get your number. So I'm going here to get my number. So I'll log in. All right. Now, I got multiple businesses that's being set up in Dun & Bradstreet. And I'm actually paying. You can get yours for free. You don't have to pay for it. You get your Dun's number for free. But I've been having a Dun's number for years now. And now I want to see my credit profile. Right now, I want to see what's in my credit profile and my in my Duns. So here it has my Duns Credit Signal Plus, my Duns Manager. There's different things. There's my Duns number right there for this company. All right, and then I got another company here called Enterprises. Okay, let's look at the WB Management first because it's the first one I built out, and I had this company since 2013. Okay, so I go to my Duns Manager and my Duns Manager. It is showing me the different things that I have on my profile. Let me let me get up here. And they always bring up this little robot here. Ask me questions. I don't need that question, right? So I want to go here and I want to see what's going on, right? This is my profile. I can go through certain things. My number, click on my profile, right? I can see that information going over. Let's get out of this. I can fix any, any I can, I can actually go to my, um, if I got something that's incorrect information, right? I say, hey, I didn't, I never signed up for this over here, right? I can actually click on that and figure out what's going on with that process, okay? I can dispute anything wrong in my account. Now, my WI Enterprises, let me, first of all, let me go back to the other one because I got to show you um, the, the difference. Let me show you the difference first. Let me go back to my other company here first, change that up. Go back to my profile. I'm going to bring back up my DMB uh, back to the dashboard. I'm going to bring up my DMB for my WBI management. I'm going to show you what's going on, the difference. All right. I don't know why it's doing this. Come on. Let me log in. Why is it doing that? Matter of fact, let me close this down. With WI management, let's go over here. Here we go. And what they do is open up a different page. Okay. All right. So right here, right here is my pay deck score 79. What does that mean? That means that I am paying my bills to the other vendors on time. If I paid them early, my score would be in the 80s. 80, 81, 82. If I pay on a day of, or they got the check by the day of, then I'm in the 70s, 78, 79. If I miss a day and paying bills, it's going to drop. It'll drop, it'll, 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 it'll deduct the point. It goes from zero all the way to 100. Zero to 100. So a 79, to put it in, in perspective, it's like a 790 credit personal credit score. A 79 is like a 790 credit score. Okay, very good. You're good on your risk. Everything is good to go. The more trade lines you got on your on your account, the more trade lines you have, um, and you're paying your stuff on risk, you're gonna give you a bigger profile that you make, right? The, the risk percentage, delinquency risk financial stress, they, they, they rate you all these different things. So having a 79, you're very good. You They say, hey, you're going to get your money. You're going to get your money. No problem. We recommend this much money. You can get this much money, right? They recommend that, okay? On this on this account, right? It has your business address here. I'm actually going through it. My annual sales, you see it's 454,000. They, they'll, they're, they're telling the vendors what you got, right? What you could do, okay? Now, that's that company, right? Remember the score. I have 79. When I go up here, uh, where am I? When I go up here, where am I at? Duns. When I go up here and I go click on, let's change this to WI Enterprises, I didn't build this out, right? Let me show you. I didn't build it out. There's nothing I have when it comes up. Let's see. I got no, see, no score. I got no score. Now, why I don't have a score is because something was confused. 
they they had put my account with somebody else. They gave me a new, they gave me a brand new account number. And I said, you know, well, go do some research and bring my account number back. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go get some brand new uh, merchants on this company. So for example, I'm gonna go get Uline. I'm gonna go get this other, I'm about, I'm about to show you. I'm, about to get, I'm gonna get these companies to pay to get some product so they can start building up my profile, right? And it's gonna start out with between three to five. Right now I got zero, I got nothing. And this company been around since 2016. I got nothing on it, nothing showing, right? Now, some of you out there, your company been around probably in the last year, two years, and you got no, you did no business credit. But you, you said you did. I went and got Bank of America. When all got up, they don't report. They don't report to your Dun, your Dun & Bradstreet. 90% of the companies do not report to DMB. So when it's time for you to get credit, they don't never see your scores. That's why I'm sharing you. I'm sharing with you this now. So how how do we fix this to make sure we get a good score? Well, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to our handy dandy software right here. This is the tool that I use, right? This is my tier one, and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna figure out what I can use. Okay, I'm gonna figure out what I can use to get my scores going. So what I'm gonna do? So who's who's reporting to who? That's the first question I need to know. I got to build up three scores. The most popular is DMB. That's the Dun & Bradstreet. Second most popular is Business Experience. It's called your IntelliScore. That's Business Experience. The third one is called Equifax. A lot of folks don't you know, do Equifax, but you still need it. You plan on some companies will use Equifax. So, but notice how many DMBs are here, right? DMB, 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 and Experian, right? So, for example, I like Uline. So, I'm going to get me a Uline. It's going to tell me it's going to be a net 30. Net 30. What does that mean? I got 30 days to use whatever I'm going to get from this company, Uline. So, if I click on this, it says, okay, I click on learn more, for example, and I go here. It's going to give me all the requirements for underwriting, right? To qualify, I got to have a good secretary of state, right? Right? A EIN number. I got to have my business address everywhere. It's got to match everywhere, right? Business phone number, all that stuff got to be everywhere, right? DMB number. Got to have a DMB. I got to go set it up. It costs no money to set it up. Don't pay for no money to get your EIN and don't pay no money to get your DMB. That's all free, okay? So I get that done. If I got a business license, most of you won't need that because you don't have a business license, right? Business bank account. They wanna know where can the funds go? Where can they check and see that you got, you're doing business? That's why you gotta have a business checking account. You gotta start putting money into it. Start getting some invoices in it, right? Get some paid, get some net fives, net sevens, net tens, get that stuff going. Work with some partners to get that done of like us. Let us be one of your partners, right? B prefer business to have good credit profile in DNB, but not required. If you're a brand new business, well, you're not going to have a profile yet. You're just going to get your 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 ID, your your Dunn's number, but you don't have any, you don't have any uh information on it yet, right? And you also got to get your Experian number as well, right? You got to get your BIN number, okay? Business address, that was time before, not your house, not your PO box. It's got to be a business. It could be a virtual one. And that address better be with the Secretary of State. It better be the same address. And the IRS records. If you move your company, you got to get contact. The IRS is, listen, my company has moved. Please update the information and they will update the information, right? So all that stuff's got to be the same way, okay? Next, application may be approved in that 30 at time of order. If you're a brand new company, they're going to have you buy a few things first. Maybe two, two times you're going to buy something in the account. Here's the phone number you can call them and set up the account right over the phone or you can go to the website and click on Uline. So I click on this website, it takes me right to Uline. What can I purchase from them? 
some things that you can get. You can get some, right? Um, it's about boxes, floor mats, carpets, stuff like that, boxes, utility stuff, chairs. Um, there's a whole lot of things you can get. Gloves. You might spend about $50 to 100 bucks, right? Do that two to three times. Um, solutions, cleaning supplies, whatever you're going to do, just get it. You, you, you got to support your business. Well, well, Wall Street, I don't need none of that. Well, I'm, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just telling you, if you're going to build a business, you're going to have to spend a little bit of money to get it uh, and then get it and then sell if you don't need it. Give it to the family members, somebody you can, you know, you, what you want to do is start building on something. Now, they they making better products so that you, you can use it in your house, right? You can use it in your house. So you can go through this whole process. They got all these things up here you can order, right? On Uline products. And it's got all kinds of stuff here, tubes, wraps mainly for shipping. All this stuff right here is mainly for shipping. Okay. All right. Enough about that. So you got that one, right? Then you go around and then it says, okay, we got that done. I got $50 on this one. They're going to take, they may force you to do two orders. So let's say you got to spend a hundred dollars. You do one order, whatever they say you got to do, do that order first, come back next month, do the same thing again, pay that bill though. You got to pay that bill early, pay the bill early, do the next order. Do it again. Then on your third order, when you do it, they're going to give you net 30 accounts. If you're a brand new company, they'll give you a net 30 account. Now you get a net 30 account. Now you got to do it. You got to do one more order. And you got to pay it, pay it that way. Right. So that'd be your third order. Now that's it's, it's going to happen because they know that people are trying to start their businesses. They want business credit. That's what you got to do. All right. When it comes to uh, fleets. So, for example, getting gas cards. Right. All the gas card companies work with the same bank. So only apply for one every 60 days, right? So here, for example, is what they want. They want a net 15. Now, the difference between PG and no PG, P, this one says no PG. That means you don't need your social security number at all. Strictly the EIN number. Here, they want a personal guarantee. They're going to use your Social Security number to 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 back up this payment on what they're doing right here. Okay, they're gonna want that information, and it may be used strictly for information saying who you are, right? And it should say that in the um, application. And if not, then it says, "Hey, we need your personal PG because we're going to hold you accountable for what how much gas you use on your business card." You got it? That's your gas card. You get down here, you got Murphy Gas, you got Come, KUM and Go, right? KUM and Go, you got Brex as a company, right? They report to DNB and Experian, DNB and Experian, Net 15, Net 15. Look at this, personal guarantee, personal guarantee. They're going to do that because it's definitely dealing with gas, all right? Get down here, Wex, that's another gas company. Now, I got Wex at the time I got it, I didn't need a personal guarantee, but now they want a personal guarantee. But that's all the gas stations. I don't care what gas stations you go to, Wex Fleet can do it. It don't matter where you go. They got like 2,500 different names of gas stations you can go to. This one, CE, CEO Creative. I'm going to be using this company uh, for all three of my businesses. They report to Equifax and Credit Safe. Credit Safe is a new company out of Canada, a new reporting agency out of Canada. They give you a net 30 account, right? They got no PG strictly off your company, EIN number. And when you click on it, let's look at some of the products they do. So for example, on this one, we're going to click on this, right? Well, some of the things you got to have, right? Minimum order is $40 to report, 40 bucks, not a lot. They report, they report every 15th of the month, okay? You might need to do two orders with them as well. Report every 10th to the 15th of the month. You get, they give you to make a payment. After the initial purchase is made, you will see the first mention on your report within 45 to 90 days, right? And then a, any consistent reporting every 30 days thereafter. If you're going to buy any things with them, they got a $99 membership fee every single year, okay? Um, what are the things you're going to need? Secretary of State, the, the, the norm, right? Business credit history. Well, you're, going, you're establishing that with them, right? Um, your EIN number, address, got to match, license if applicable, business bank account, 30 days. You need at least 30 days in business. 
30 days. Okay. Apply online or over the phone. Let's go to, to the website. Click on this. You click on it. That's why I said this is a tool. I need the tool. Right. You can get T-shirts made. Right. Company stuff made. Supplies. They work on websites. They do all kind of things for you. Right. All right here in this company. And you're getting it done on a net 30 basis. OK. Um, you got supplies. Right. Paper, notes, all this different stuff here. Um, you can get your business cards done, your mugs, uh, cleaning supplies, whatever. What, what the, stuff, the point is, you get here and then you can go in and get a net 30 account. And so you start reporting to your company information. That's what you want. Right. That's the whole that's the whole goal. So that they report to who? Equifax and Credit Safe. My Equifax profile is weak. But I got to get it done. You can't apply for Equifax. It just goes out to Equifax. OK, cannot apply for it. All right. So enough about that. Now, so when we look at this information about the companies we're going to do, Granger is one of them They're right here in Atlanta. Granger is right down, um, right off, right off of I-75, right? Um, right in the Forest Park area, right here. They report to DNB. They do net 30. No personal guarantees. None. Beautiful. Right. I can go there and I can get printers and tools. I'm just going to go to it now. So here, um, what do they need, right? 1,300 suppliers to provide customers to, right? Electrical fasteners, fleet, HVAC, hardware. Um, you got all this information right here, which you can do, right? Secretary of State, same thing, right? DNB number, business address, EIN, Secretary of State, everything is in good standing, right? We get all down here, 60 days old, right? Your company has to be registered with the state for at least 60 days, right? 60 days, okay? No minimum order to report. No minimum order to report, but at least 50, what are they saying? $50 payment history, right? They won't report unless you got $50 on it. Let's go to the website. Let's check it out. We click on this. We go to Granger, and they got all kind of tools here, right? All kind of tools for equipment, they got tools for, I know I bought printers from there. I mean, I just, just got all kind of stuff from here. It's a big, big company, right? You can order different things from the book catalog right there. Click on catalog and they got all kind of stuff that you can order uh, from, from this site. Granger is a big company. They support all, all businesses, brand new businesses. You guys can make things happen right here. All right, enough about that. Uh, but this is how you're going to build it, right? This is how you're going to build your company um, going, you know, doing different things. So once you get this tool and these names change, they don't stay here because some of them start, they stop reporting. Some of, them, some of them now was a category one, a tier one company. Now they went to tier two company. So they they made their requirements stronger. So you can't, when you open up your business, you can't use, you can't get them yet. You need more seasoning in your business. You got to be around for three months, five months. You got to have three companies reporting already before you get to the next tier, right? So that's what that means. So this is a way for, that's why I said you need this tool because this tool is going to keep you going in the right direction. But we have this information. If you're on level three inside of MLS, you got this information already, what to do, okay? For at least for this first tier. Um, to build your business credit, you got to join our trade academy in our business credit to make that happen there. All right. Enough about that. Uh, I'm pretty much done. Um, you Again, you're going to go to your business experience. You're going to build on that profile at the same time. Right. Because you want to get your business experience score. And then you want to get a thing called NAV for your for your reporting. Now, this NAV is free for the moment. Right. NAV is free. I'm going to go there now. We're going to log in to NAV. And what NAV does, NAV, NAV is what I'm talking about. So what they do is a free service, and you can pay for it as well. And they allow you to go here and get it for free or $24 a month, right? I think it gets to the point you pay $24 a month. So you, so what happens is they keep track of your, your business, for example. So here I got my business in, right? I click on view my report. When I click on it, it gives me my scores, right? This is like, like a month. So November score, December score, January score, I'm at 78, right? 
I can see my full report over here, right? I can see what's going on in my report. This is why I got a 78. Here's my company information, right? You got to verify that this is accurate, right? You scroll down, it tells you what how many trade lines you've been reporting. So here's my 10 trade lines. My goal is to get at least 18 to 20, maybe 25. Um, balance of trade lines, my highest balance of trade lines, right? N I got nothing derogatory, right? I got total liabilities, liens, judgments, lawsuits. Nothing like that is going against my company, right? My pay deck score, I'm in the 80s, right? Doing good there. Um, go down. It says, hey, you know, you qualify. Based off your business, you qualify for American Express. Well, I already got it, right? I got I got 20 credit cards on my business, right? Business Ex I got American Express. I got two of them, right? So you got uh, American Express, the, the blue cash card, the gold card, the platinum cards, right? You can get all, it's all kind of cards you can get on your business. Let's put it that way. You can get business loans. They give you loans. They, they, they allow you to have uh, alerts going on. Right, business checking. You can they'll check all this information for you. Get your tools going, so you can build on that as well. But this is a great um, score, right? Dun and Bradstreet score and your other scores. It it show you. It it'll be right there as you building your business. Okay, that's what that's doing. All right, enough about that. But this is where you're gonna start learning to build that business profile. The business profile. Is going to allow you to start getting your checking account to start, you know, producing more cash flow. But that's what you're looking for. How do I get, how do I fund my business? And I want to fund it to a point where I'm making at least $10,000 a month. Now, for you, that's a struggle. But when you're part of our group, that's not a struggle because we got all businesses that's going to be supporting your business to get you over $10,000 a month. That's what we're going to be doing. You got it? So, but it costs you to be in that, to be in that, right? That's what it costs to be a part of our club. Okay, to join our club, just to let you know, I'm going to bring up one chart here for the folks that want to be a part of it. Now, I'm giving you some information how to grow your business. You can do it on your own, of course you can. You can do it on your own, but how long is it going to take you? Most people don't make twenty eight thousand dollars a year in their first two or three years in their business. Some of you've been in longer than that, and you still ain't making no money. You still don't have a clientele. So we can help you with that, get that going. But I'm going to bring up, I'm going to go here and bring up um, what it takes to be a part of our our club and what, it, what it's all about. And then we're going to close out for the day. Okay. I was going to bring up a few slides because we do a presentation three days a week now, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at nine o'clock, we do a presentation. All right. So let me, let me go over here real quick. I'm going to show you the power in our club, okay? And I showed you a little bit earlier where the, the cash flow was coming in, right? So here's our 10 different levels. Let me bring it up for you now. Let me bring it over here, all right? Here's our 10 levels, okay? So what we have right here is our 10 levels of each one of these, each one of these centers, we call them Bitcoin centers. Each one of these Bitcoin centers has education in it and it allows you to get paid on these different levels all the way through. And for some of you, if you was if you had stayed and stayed motivated with this, you'll be well over three hundred thousand dollars already. I'm just saying, I'm just talking already, okay? But this is what each each level represents: a house, and it has two two what they call two lines. There's an A line for the two rooms, and you get paid on these two rooms if you bring somebody, invite somebody, and they decide to sign up with you. And then on the B line, no matter who falls on the B line, you're making at least between 45% or 90, 45% or 90. And then between that, the last house that's filled up, either this one or this one, I'm going to put a red uh, box around this. And what happens is wherever the last house is filled up, what happens next is it will create a brand new house so you can get paid again on that level. What it takes to get started in our in our community, $199 to get started in MLS. And then you join a level, you join one of these levels if you want to get paid on these levels and get the education from these levels. Okay. 
you you will get the education on a starter level when you pay the 199. But if you want to get to any and get paid on these levels, you got to join these levels. You got it? There's 10 different centers in here. Okay. So this is an example of the house. So here's the house, right? You fill up all these rooms, you get paid. Every day is payday. Every day is payday. So if you brought somebody in today, you will get paid today. Okay. Notice this says the, B the BTC value is 20,000. Well, it's already 23,000 as of today, right? It's 23,000 and some change. So 199 plus 0 0.016. Again, for you to find out what 0 0.016 is, all you got to do is go to BTC. I'm sorry. You go to bitsusd.com, B I T S U S D.com, and type in 0 0.016. You'll see that on there. Anyway, when you go to the website, get your free account, it'll tell you exactly uh, how much you got to pay. Okay. And we are setting, setting up a merchant account on that site right now. So now you could join with a credit card as well as with crypto. Right. For right now, the credit card won't stay there, but we, we are in a like a relaunch to allow you to use your credit card to sign up with it. But you can always go to bitpay.com bitpay.com and get your bitcoin uh from that from that company okay all right so here we go so we got two and four go back down here so when the fourth when the fourth house the fourth room was filled up it created a second one when that was filled up it created a third one when that filled up it created a fourth one and then it created the fifth one so in this one they got two more to go and they fill this one up and they keep moving what the goal is look at this this never stops this whole thing never stops, never, just keeps going. And just give you an example of the power in that. I'm going to bring up uh, Bits USD again. I'm going to bring it up. And so, for example, this person made 0 0.045. So Bitcoin, right? We're going to move it over a little bit. So here's Bitcoin. All right. We're going to type in 0 0.045. Well, that person just made $1,045. Whether that took 30 minutes or whether it took a month or a year, that's what they still made in crypto. But that can be done in the next 10 minutes, right? You don't have to be waiting to make $1,045. It can, if you got the people ready to sign up with you and they want to learn what we do, then guess what? There it is, right? So that person made again 0 0.048. So what is that? Well, that's $1,100 right there. Now, some of these people, they went to a, a higher level. They went to a, they upgraded to level one, right here, level one. And now they're making, for example, 0 0.12, 0 0.12. Well, that's $2,800. They did it again, another $2,800. Then they got 0 0.09, okay? All right, that's $2,000, okay? $22,900. So what, what I'm saying to you, what I'm saying to you is payday is every day. It's a, this is an everyday payout. Everyday payout. Every day. June 28th, June 29th, June 30th, June, July the 1st. Every day is a payout. Every single day. And depending on what you want to do, right? We've been paying like this since 2016. This is 0.9847 Bitcoin with 14 referrals. And this person made $20,000. Now, whether that took a year or 30 minutes, doesn't matter. Same, it's the same. This person right here did 1.855, 15 referrals. Here it is, 38,440, right? This person right here did 11.876 Bitcoin with 46 referrals, right? They had $246,000. That's a quarter of a million dollars, a quarter of a million. We got people that did 35 Bitcoin in this 35 Bitcoin, right? That's what, 35 Bitcoin. Guys, I'm just telling you, it's totally up to you, right? If you want to learn how to create cash flow, create the cash flow, get in the business, keep the business growing over and over and over again, then you got you, you got a success rate. This is where you at, success rate. It's all up to you on where you want to take your cash flow, take your business and do everything you want to do.
Um, and that's just part of our deal, what we do here in this club. With that being said, guys, you're going to learn how to trade as well. You'll learn how to get rid of debt. We're going to get you into insurance. Um, we'll get you to, to save a lot, right? Here's my business experience score. To give an example, this is one of my companies that I'm in. That's my name. This is my business experience score right here, right? I got an 86. You got it. That's an 86. And then look how it just kept rising, right? That's an BIN number. See, it says BIN. That's what you got to get. You got to set up an account to look up your BIN number and you can grow from there. Okay. Well, guys, listen, I appreciate you guys hanging in, hanging in with us today. Um, it's one of those, it's one of those deals where you just keep growing and keep learning, get your business off the ground, keep it moving. And I do appreciate you coming in, hanging out with us. Okay. Um, I see, I see you, Zana Martin, loving this. I see you, Alicia McCullen. How you doing, Alicia? I know that baby got big now. <laughs> I see Mr. Baker. What's going on, brother? How you doing? Antoinette, I see you. See you, sis, out there. That's on Facebook group. And for everybody else on, on the um, stream yard or YouTube, listen, I appreciate you guys coming in. I see Bob Stanek, Rosetta. I see Jeannie Moore. I see Kim Ganey. Uh, I see... Uh, a few other people there. I appreciate all you guys for hanging out with me today, learning about building, building your business credit. Remember, business credit will make you rich. Your personal credit will get you a lifestyle, but your business credit will get you rich. You got it? And so we go from there. If you want to join us and get going inside of MLS, if you ever was a part of MLS, you still got your profile. If you want to start fresh, you can always start fresh again. I'm not going to stop you from doing that, um, but just what you can do. We appreciate all of you from getting started, from coming here, taking the time out today. But if you want to find uh, cash flow, fast cash flow, our company's been here since 2014, right? Some of you have been knowing me since 2014, 2015, right? You've been knowing me for a long time and we still in the grind. We got one of the oldest Bitcoin clubs, right, in the United States. I want you to think about that. One of the oldest companies in the United States. That's that's powerful. And that's a proud thing to say that we're still here. We're still building. We're just taking our time and helping you guys get there. It's one person at a time. All we're doing is helping one person at a time. We'll get there. All right. I believe that this business division is going to be the biggest division in MLS. I believe it's going to take us to well over 100,000 members. If you really dig in and what we're doing, we're going to be over 100,000 members. And what the deal is, how many of those members will be part of your team? You got it? Because they got to join through somebody. So hopefully you are inviting people to come look at what we do and uh, you, you reap the rewards. Plus you get the education. With that being said, you guys take care. God bless. I'm going to play our song. Get us out of here. And uh, I appreciate everybody in this, in our club. Thanks for watching. Cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency. Changing how the world does business. Ask MLS system how to get in on this. Send money around the world almost free. We don't need a bank's permission, you see Tell your friends about MLS system Here to raise our financial wisdom Spreading like a wildfire all over the world Don't get left out, learn what it's all about From just pennies to thousands of dollars Bitcoin grew a worldwide currency Only a few knew well MLS system is making it happen Open your account and get tapped in Digital currency is an emerging technology A way to up your financial psychology It's money you can spend Let it grow exponentially before you dip in It's called cryptocurrency 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 Changing how the world does business just make sure you get in on this Send money around the world almost free We don't need a bank's permission, you see
Tell your friends about MLS system Hear the race of financial wisdom Countries around the world are jumping in Creating ways to ride the train Business is lining up to accept Bitcoin Soon every store will join Go in LS system to get your coins Get in the mix, learn the tricks Bitcoins are facing the dark 20 to 1 Call in LS system to have some fun Cryptocurrency, changing how the world does business. All right, buddy. Have a good night. You guys take care. God bless and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.